Welcome. I'm Roland Grouse, Product Manager at Agoric, and in this video, I'm going to walk through the treasury that Agoric launched as part of the Agoric beta. Um, so in a previous video, I went through the process to set up your wallet, and in this video, I will have already set it up. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, take a look at the previous video or just go to the documentation that's linked from uh, the beta site and walk through the steps there. Uh, if you have questions, uh, again, please jump into the Discord, ask team members or ask part of the community, and they can help set you up. So I've got two tabs open. One is the treasury itself at treasury.agoric.app, and then the other is the wallet, which again, we've already set up. So as a reminder, as part of the setup process for the wallet, uh, I was provisioned with a number of different tokens. So uh, I have different purses here, and each purse is specific to a token type. So uh, in my Cosmos staking purse, I've got fake atoms here. Uh, in my Agoric staking purse, I've got fake build here, uh, et cetera. Uh, I've also already connected to the Treasury app. So you saw me do that uh, at the end of the wallet setup video. Uh, but when you launch, after the wallet is launched, you launch the application here, um, it will ask you to connect. And I've gone ahead and done that. OK, so on the Treasury app itself, uh, I'm going to walk through three different things. I'm going to walk through the process of creating a new vault, which is the page that you're taking to at the, at the front of treasury.agoric.app. I'm going to walk through managing an existing vault that's already set up. And then I'm going to walk through uh, doing a swap of tokens uh, on our automated market maker. OK, so to start with, uh, I, and, and this is not a video about uh, vaults or the economy, but I want to introduce a couple of these concepts if you're not familiar. Um, the, the vault concept is similar to those of you familiar with MakerDAO or Synthetics SUSD. Uh, it's a similar model where uh, you can create an over collateralized loan position and uh, the contract will mint a currency uh, in this case the currency is run which is agoric's local currency um, and run is what you use to pay for transactions in a future release in agoric uh, and it will be the the primary currency that um, uh, services and products are denominated in in the agoric ecosystem and the only way to create run is to uh, create a vault right now so what you do to uh, when, when you see this first page here, you're, you're shown a list of different collateral types. Um, and I'm actually I'm only shown collateral types where I already have a purse for them. So, for example, uh, if the vault accepted Ethereum, uh, but I did not have a purse for Ethereum, I wouldn't be shown that as, as an option here. Um, I'm also shown a current market price for these assets. And again, this is fake. Um, I'm shown what the minimum collateralization ratio is to start a vault with, uh, which is just really some buffer to make sure that I, I'm not starting a vault that's uh, too close to the liquidation ratio. And liquidation ratio is if the price of the collateral falls too much, uh, the, the treasury will protect the debt by selling some of the collateral or all of the collateral and paying off your debt. So that's the ratio at which liquidation occurs. Um, and then I'm also shown an interest rate, which uh, in, at the time of this video is extremely competitive. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to start by creating a vault with, let's say, Adam here. Um, I'm taken now to a screen where I can configure the vault itself. So I've got, um, I'm shown here that I've got 68 atoms available in my funding verse, and I can confirm that here. Um, and Therefore, uh, I can lock up up to that much. Um, it asked me to choose a purse, but in this case, I only have one purse that is uh, connected to the Atom uh, asset, so I don't have an option here. And I'm going to choose 30 Atom to lock up. So you can see that the run got populated right away. And uh, what that the, the way that got calculated is uh, the system has a price for Atom, and which was shown in the previous page. And then uh, it knows it's got a collateralization percent that it started with. So uh, this ensures uh, this calculation is really just saying Adam times the price, which I think was roughly $18, um, and over collateralized at 150% gets you to 370 run. Um, I can change any of these uh, and, and have it adjust the rest. So for example, if I want to have a collateralization ratio of 180% instead, it will keep my previous entry of 30 atoms, but change the amount of run that I would get. This will be a, a slightly safer vault, uh, safer in the sense that I'm less likely to get liquidated. Um, OK, so that's really the configuration screen here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move forward with this vault that I've, I've selected here. Um, so I would expect to receive somewhere around 309 run. Um, that will get modified a little bit based on calculations on the chain. So I'll hit configure. And again, it'll remind me of what I'm about to do. And then I'm going to hit create. 
Um, and you can see I've got an existing vault here. Um, this new one is now pending wallet acceptance. So in, in a second, this will plumb through the system and um, it will be shown as an offer. And there we go. Um, and one thing, especially for those of you that are new to the Agoric system, um, one thing that is really important about the way uh, offers are structured is that it includes a give and a want. So in this case, I'm giving 30 atoms to create the vault and I want 309.23, et cetera, run. Um, the exchange of these assets is, is enforced at the protocol level. That's what our Zoe framework is doing or one of the things our Zoe framework is doing. And um, therefore I know that if something goes wrong with receiving my run here, uh, I'll get my atoms back. And uh, the, because the system is doing an escrow and an exchange and it won't, it won't trigger that until it has what it needs to fulfill this offer. Um, so anytime uh, in Agoric, there is a direct exchange of like for like in, in an atomic transaction, um, that, that can get enforced at the protocol level with what we call offer safety in Zoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this offer. And um, you'll see here, uh, before that goes through, you can see I've got 417 run uh, before this uh, vault gets created. And that was from my previous vault. Um, and I had 68 atoms. So once that runs through the system, that will refresh. Uh, you can see here, uh, back on the treasury, I now have two vaults, um, one for 30 build, another for 30 atom. Um, I've got a borrow position of 310 run on this. If I want to go in and manage the vault and do that. And I can see my vault details here. Um, and Importantly, if I want to adjust the vault, I can actually do, I can adjust collateral and debt in one step. So for example, um, if I want to deposit additional atoms and deposit four atoms here, um, and you can see that my, you know, my current uh, vault values will remain, but it's going to show me the new proposed vault value. So adding four atoms gets my collateralization ratio up to 202%. Uh, um, but for example, if I want to do something bad, so I want to withdraw uh, enough collateral that would put me below the liquidation threshold. Um, let's say I want to withdraw 20 atoms. Um, it's going to gray out the make offer. It won't let me. It won't let me make that offer to the system. All right. So let's stick with depositing a few more atoms in here. Um, I also can borrow a little bit more debt. So or borrow a little bit more run. So let's say I want um, another 50 run. Um, it's going to show me the collateralization ratio, oh, and that's the same. So let's just change that a little bit. Um, my collateralization ratio will drop, um, but and my debt will go up, but I can do that all in one transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and make offer. And it's going to ask me to approve that in my wallet. Uh, so that will come through. And again, that will be a similar transaction to what you just saw. Um, so this is how you manage your your existing vaults in the system. We also have uh, an option here to automatically close out the vault. And all that's all that will do is um, it will repay all the debt, it will deposit, um, or it will withdraw all the collateral uh, and end the vault and actually close the record out. So I'm not going to bother to show that in this video, but um, this is the core management uh, of the vault application. And this is how, uh, as a user coming into the system with different types of collateral, you can manage uh, the run that you're taking out, uh, and which you can use in the Agoric ecosystem. All right, and so this uh, this offer came through here. Let's see. Yep, so I've got to give a five atoms and I want 70 run. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that as well. Um, but I'm gonna move on before that before that process is through. So the, the last thing that I wanna show in this video is operating our swap. And so swap is similar to AMMs that you've seen in, in other applications. Um, for the initial beta here, we have implemented this with just a standard XYK curve. Uh, that, it, importantly, as we approach mainnet, will start to get more interesting as we add pluggable curves, pluggable fees, um, and anything else that you as developers are interested in building on top. Um, because the swap application will be likely one of the primary places to, to um, buy and sell, run and build currencies. But then if you're building your own app, um, your own application and you have a native token there, you may want to list it on swap as well. So let's start, uh, when I go to the swap uh, page here, uh, I, I'm started, I'm defaulted to input as run. So if I want to buy a new currency, this would be how I would do that. Um, and then I can decide what kind of token I want to buy. So 
let's say that I actually want to buy some um, build here. And I'll, I, I want to spend about a hundred run on my build. Uh, it's gonna take a second to get the price loaded. Um, it knows that one build equals 27 run. Um, so I'm only buying a few build here. Maybe let's, let's up this a little bit. And again, for those of you familiar with uh, an automated market maker, uh, you likely understand what this is doing here. If you're not, that's probably a subject for a different video, but the price is determined based on the amount of liquidity that is in um, the liquidity pool underlying the swap. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and decide to swap this. So I'm spending 500 run to buy uh, roughly 18 build. And again, I'm notified that I want to, uh, I need to approve that in my wallet. And so that offer is gonna come through. And again, um, this is another offer that's structured with offer safety. Uh, so I have a give the 510 run and then a want, which is 17.92 build. Um, one thing to note is that when you see this give and want come through, the numbers may not entirely match exactly what you put into the swap. And the reason for that is it's building in a little bit of slack around slippage on the AMM. And actually, if you're if you use Uniswap, this is this is sort of done in the background without you really realizing it as well. Uh, if you go into the settings, you can set your slippage tolerance and you're effectively putting a limit order into the system that says don't execute if the price moves more than this much. Uh, and that's all that this is doing uh, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and then accept that. So again, I should have 510 fewer run at the end of this and some additional build. Uh, so I've got 43 build right now and then 796 run. And you can see this is reset here. Um, and if I reset the, the wallet, there we go. Uh, payments will come through and uh, we'll just take a minute to plumb through the system here. All right, so I've got fewer run. Um, I've got, we'll have additional build. All right, so the build has now refreshed. Okay, uh, great. So this is the, these are the primary mechanics of the treasury application that we're launching as part of beta. Um, from a UI perspective, there's there's a lot that we want to improve here. Uh, a lot of our work has been on the back end and making sure that things link together correctly. Uh, a lot of stuff we want to improve on latency, uh, but the core mechanics are here. And as a developer, you can see how they're implemented. You know, really encourage you to dig into the code, uh, come ask us questions, start to think about how you might build stuff on top of what we've built here, um, because this really is the foundation for what we're going to do in the Agoric economy. So thanks very much.